Hi, y'all. Welcome to my, welcome to my shop. Uh, today we're going to return a Cherry Burrow Bowl. Uh, I haven't turned these in a while, and they've been sitting on the on the shelf. I pulled one out and got to looking at it, and like, whoa, it doesn't even have a date on it. And I thought, well, that's maybe about a year ago. And I thought, I keep looking at a pile, because I did a bunch of Cherry Burrows all at one one time. And when I kept digging, come to find out, it was like over over a year and a half ago. So I have, I've got a couple of others to re return. So I thought I'd use the technique that Richard uh, Raffin uh, demonstrates, and that's uh, go ahead and chuck it with a with a rough tenon, chuck it with a with a rough tenon, uh, turn a, a recess, and and when I tried that and put this up against the blank, um, in, in put this in in the chuck, it was so far off from the distortion from the drying on this burl that it, I could tell I might run out of one side and still have some left over and I still couldn't position it. So I decided, okay, I'll do it the way I normally do. I'm going to put it against a uh, a friction chuck. You know, I make a distinction between a friction chuck means you need pressure on both ends. Jam chuck means it can be inhaled with, with just, just on the tailstock side. Because I left a dimple there, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up, bring up the tailstock. And now I think that's going to give me my best chance of getting it centered. Uh, I left this large. That's, you know, when you're turning green, you definitely want to leave your tenon oversized. You don't make an optimum size because when it distorts and you have to trim it down, you're going to have a problem if you make it too small. So I think I've got enough meat on here. I can clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to use my, my detail uh, gouge, uh, 3 8 cents, got a lot of meat, leaned over the tool rest, and I can get in a corner. It's, it's very difficult for me to get into a corner and get a nice crisp corner uh, with just a bowl gouge. So let me put on my face shield and let's get going. I need to go back and reset the pulleys to uh, bowl setting. Forgot that, should have done that before I started. Okay, now we can go ahead and get started. And it looks like it runs fairly true this way. Slowly, yeah, this is not too bad. Doing it the other way, it was distorted on the inside, apparently maybe more so than it is the outside. I'm gonna get the speed up a little bit, maybe 600, and then clean up this tenon. I'm using a parallel tenon with my Technotool chuck. Coming straight down. And it's slipping a little bit, I've got some of that uh, router pad, that open mesh. And then when I get to the bottom, I want to bring it out. Kind of flatten the bottom a little bit. And I just want to nip the corner here. trick I learned from Stuart Batty because if, if it gets pulled out of the chuck you got more of a chance for it to getting pulled out instead of shearing off if you have this little little chamfer on the end. Now I'm going to go ahead while I've got it mounted instead of turning it around and doing the inside I'm going to go ahead and uh, make an effort of, of rounding off the outside and certainly got to turn this thing to make sure it clears otherwise we could have us a real a real problem. I'm going to switch, uh, you know, I'm, I'm learning from watching, watching Richard's, uh, his different te techniques, and I'm using a large spindle gouge I have, because I think it will, it will do real well on this. It's got a, it's a 5 8 inch, so it's very, st uh, very stout, but it's got a nice open flute. I think I can use this to good advantage. I'm going to take probably at least a couple of passes. Right in the bevel. Wow. 
I'm getting a lot of big chips flying off, hitting my hands, not real comfortable, so I'm going to put a glove on my left hand. You hear some people say it's terribly unsafe to wear a glove, you know. I got the fingers cut out. It just keeps the chips from burning. You can also put painter's tape, something around your hand, but this works works for me. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel, lift the handle till it cuts. I think I can spin this a little bit faster. Okay, so I've got it almost even now. I've, it, the trick is to get a, a nice, comfortable, um, or a nice, smooth cut off the, off the tool. Okay, let's see what kind of surface I've got here. It's pretty clean. Pretty clean. I'm going to lose. This is a really ragged edge, so I'll worry about that cleaning up. We've got a few tool marks down here at the bottom. Let me take one more pass to the bottom. Matter of fact, I might even try to... Let's try a uh, scraper. Just get rid of a couple tool marks down at the bottom. Got a nice profile. Got a pretty nice even cut. Still got a little few tool marks down here at the bottom. I can still work on a little bit. Don't want to sand them all out. Let's try it. I think the burr's gone. Let me go. Let me go back and sharpen it. Lots of techniques for creating a burr. I take the old, old burr off, so I've got two parallel, two lines meeting in a plane, and then I use a carbide. Some people use high-speed steel, but I think high-speed steel on high-speed steel is not going to work as well as carbide. And I've got this carbide end mill. And I just bring it up about three degrees, put a little pressure on it, bring it around. One or two strokes ought to do it. I'm going to tilt it down a little bit. Very light pressure. Now we're going to bring it up in the shear scrape, get even finer cut. I'm very happy with that. I removed the tool marks and a little sanding will do any minor, minor cleanup that's left. Okay, let's turn it around. Press down firmly in the middle. I get even pressure. And whoa, I got a thin wall over here, thick wall over here. So when we do the inside, let's hope let's hope this bowl is salvageable. We'll see. Get rid of the tail stock at live center. Now first thing I'm gonna do is get get this rim down. I've got a I've got a crack, I've got the pith here. Very uneven. Let's kind of see where that goes. Clears there, clears there, clears there. Okay. We're going to use that uh, half inch bowl gouge. And we're just going to come straight in, do a little sweep on this end. 
on the pull cut. Flute's facing at about maybe 10 o'clock. Almost got it even. I can look down it. It's almost squared up. I'll probably see a few edges that haven't been cut. Cut, cut. Got a little bit of a gap there. Gap there, a little gap. So I gotta bring it down a little bit more. So we come in this way. Depth and necessary. That's cut. That's cut. That's cut. Okay, it's cut all the way around. So that looks good. I'm gonna get rid of this sharp edge here. You know, because if it cuts you, it'll also cauterize the wound. That's good news. Just knock a little bit of the corner off there, make it a little safer. All right, now let's take a pencil. Let's get a feel for what's gonna happen to that wall. All right, it's thin there. It's gonna start back here. Comes around, cutting the wall, cutting the wall, cutting the wall, cutting the wall. Okay, good. It's cutting in, it's cutting in the right places. So it's going to be a fairly thin bowl, but that, I think that'll be all right. It'll be nice. Let me get out my depth gauge just to get a feel for how far down this thing's got to go. And I look straight down here, and I can see I've got, oh, five-eighths of an inch at the bottom. So I don't need to go very deep at the bottom. Mostly I just need to clean out this wall. So let's pick up the cut. All right, let's do the entry cut. I'm going to use my thumb to kind of brace it, come in almost perpendicular. Here's the bevel going straight in. I'm just going to catch it out here a little ways. See where I hit the wood. Open it up. Come back a little bit more. Make sure I'm cutting. It's banging around a little bit. I know I'm going to wind up having that thing skate out on me because the wood is hard and I've got to go in a way. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a square scraper and I'm just going to create a little bit of a wall right here for that starting cut. There. So now I've got a wall, so a whole lot easier for me to control. I'm cutting a fair amount of wood on one side, so I'm getting a little bit of banging around, but that's okay. I just may have to take a couple of multiple cuts. I don't want to take, take too much at one time. So let me come on back. This burl is hard. Let me take a break and go sharpen this because I think it can be sharper. I'm not sure that it's dull, but it can be sharper. Okay, now that I got it sharp, let me go ahead and change the orientation of this tool rest just a little bit. Come into the middle. Okay, clear it. Make sure it's rubbing, not rubbing.
Let's see if I can catch some of this across the bottom. I'm, this gouge is about a 40 degree bevel. It's too hard to float across the bottom. Let me get another gouge. I'm going to use this bottom feeder. See if I can't do a little better at the bottom. Still needs a little thin in here. Try and pick up the cut here. Check the thickness. You can't see it, but I can I can see what the gap is on the other end of the thickness. So it looks good, looks good, looks good. Bring it around and around, looks good. Okay, I got a very uniform thickness all the way, all the way to essentially to almost to the bottom. So that's good. Got a little bit of a bulge right here. I think I need to try to scrape that out. Let me let me see what I can do with a shear scraper bringing it up. All right, probably ought to mark that with a pencil. And it pays to mark it on each end of the hump, not on the hump, because as soon as you touch the hump, the pencil mark goes away. Okay, so now I got two parallel lines, and I know I'm trying to get in the middle of those lines. I'm going to bring this thing, this rounded edge, up. Okay, got rid of those pencil marks. That looks good. Feels good. About right. Need to clean up the bottom a little bit. I'm going to switch to a negative rake scraper. I've got a large negative rake scraper that's not as aggressive as a regular scraper. I can keep it flat and let's see, it's got a bit of a burr on it. I think it does. A little low. Let's raise the tool rest up just a little bit so I can cut on center. Calipers again down near the bottom. Just a little thicker there. Quite a bit thicker there. Okay, I've still got oh, maybe a quarter of an inch or so. I can thin it down starting in there. Come up under it. Come right, it, come right across it. Okay, I'm liking that. I think we'll call that good. Okay, let me turn on my Canvac dust collector. All right, slow the speed down. Look for areas that may need a little special attention with the lathe not moving. I see a little bit of a tool mark here to here. Let's let's concentrate on that. Now I've got just a tiny little button there at the bottom. Let me get rid of that. All right, now I can turn the lathe on. Fairly slow speed. I'm going to turn it down to no more than about 2, 225. And I can get this surface. And I never sanded the outside, I don't think. Let's get it. 
You do the Turner's dance with the sander just like you do the bowl gouge. Anchor it on your body, just use your body. Maneuver around. And change grits. Until we get up to about 320 and then we'll call it quits. So we're going to take it out of the chuck. I like to use a vacuum chuck, but with all the little voids and micro fissures, I don't think I'd have real good luck holding it. So let's go ahead and just take this chuck off and we're going to replace it with the, the vacuum chuck. We're just not going to use the vacuum pump. I tend to, to do, sometimes I use a, a vacuum chuck like this. It's got an edge and, and that, that conforms. But in one like this is that I've just turned, it's got a flat edge. What I tend to like is this big flat plate with fun foam on it. It's 1 16th inch closed cell foam. Bring up the live center for support. We've still got that original dimple we had before. All right, I've got to turn it around. I've got most of the tendon nibbled away. Now I'm going to sand it, sand it off a little bit. Go through the grits. All right, let's examine. Let's examine the bottom. Doesn't look too bad. I want to want to define that that detail just a little bit more. Got a couple of possibilities, and I think I'll use my detail gouge. That's all it should take. Sand that out a bit. Now let's take that nub down just a little bit more. Got to be careful with this burl. Not to put too much pressure that would cause this to crumble or to get any bad catches. Okay, let's knock that off with a chisel. I could cut this off with a flush cut saw, but this chisel should work just fine. And I can sand the rest of that off. Okay, I, I used my collet chuck uh, with a quarter inch uh, collet to hold the mandrel. And I can use two hands to do this, and it'll make short uh, short work of getting rid of that little nub and smoothing off the bottom. And I go through all the grits. Recommended. I've got a lot of dust, very fine dust, and a lot of crevices, and it's it's actually recommended to vacuum nowadays to get rid of that dust. But you know, I'm kind of old school, and I just tend to blow it around my shop with an air compressor into all the little crevices and blow it out before I uh, put any finish on it. Blow it inside and out. Blow it away from you. If you got your dust collector, you can blow it toward the dust collector. Okay, use old bandsaw blades as trivets. I'm using my favorite finish, Minwax Antique Oil. Works great. I generally pour a small amount into a cup because I don't like to uh, pour pour it back in so I try to pour just enough in here and I'm just gonna liberally put some in use a old t-shirt and just liberally rub it in get it in all the nooks and crannies and crevices I'll put on probably three maybe four coats over a period of four or five days some people like to do this with a brush I feel like uh, I don't waste as much finish doing it this way. You can get this uh, Minwax Antigua on the U.S. from uh, Ace Hardware Store. You can't get it at Walmart, can't get it at the big box home stores like uh, uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. Can't get it at Woodcraft. It's mostly, uh, frankly, it's mostly mineral spirits and uh, boil linseed oil and some magic greed. It really doesn't have any varnish in it. So it soaks into the wood very well and helps seal the pores when you put in several coats. So when you buff it, 
you know, you can't really burn through it like you might lacquer. Oh, this pearl is beautiful. Y'all stay safe. Come on back, you hear?